On Tuesday, as you know, a subcontractor in Goulburn tested positive to the virus. That's all we seem to worry about, isn't it? Add up all those who test positive. Most don't even know they've got it. But following the subcontractor testing positive, someone dreamt up the fact that in Fairfield, southwest Sydney, you can't leave your council area of work unless you can prove you've been tested for COVID in the preceding 72 hours. Get it? You'd have to be tested every three days in order to work outside the Fairfield local government area. And you're told to stay at home for anything but essential work. But Brad Hazard, the New South Wales Health Minister, when asked, couldn't define essential work. Have a look at this. Will you define what is and isn't essential work? And can you send a message on what is essential and what isn't essential? Look, we've, we've indicated, James, you've asked that question in regard to um, what is essential shopping, what is essential work a number of times. And what we've indicated is that to try and define that is, uh, is very challenging. But I think uh, in terms of uh, essential work, the employer and the employee would know whether that particular worker was essential to the particular circumstances. And so it will be left to the, uh, to the worker and to the employer. I mean, it's amusing, isn't it? The people making the rules can't explain them. I keep saying Gladys Berejiklian and Brad Hazard in New South Wales are out of their depth. There is hubris and a defiance in their behaviour. The situation unfolding in Fairfield local government area in southwest Sydney is an absolute disgrace. You can't support a government that operates in this willy-nilly way, making rules as they go along. The government edict yesterday calling on everyone in the local government area of Fairfield has backfired spectacularly. From midnight, as I said, a new directive came into effect, which required all essential workers who need to leave the local... Think about this. The local Fairfield area to have a test every three days and provide evidence of their negative result, as if a positive result was going to kill you. And in 99% of the cases, you won't even know you've got it. But it gets worse. When this announcement was made, the New South Wales Labor Party wrote to the Health Minister Hassard, I've seen the letter, immediately, and warned this would be a disaster because most of the people in Fairfield travel for their work. They're tradespeople, manufacturing workers, hard-working Australians. As well, the testing clinics are located in local suburban streets which have one way in and one way out. Well, well done, Berejiklian and Hazard. So overnight, hundreds of people waited six to eight hours to get tested with huge queues barely moving into the early hours of this morning. The queues were kilometres long. Traffic blocked off streets. There were tradies lining up from 2am because they needed to get their test in order to head off to work and not break the law. Big Brother was waiting for them. This is what we've become. These sorts of queues we used to see in East Germany and in dictatorship countries like Romania. Here we are in Sydney. At least today, Dominic Perrottet, the New South Wales Treasurer, apologised to the residents of Fairfield. But the only conclusion you can draw from this is the obvious one. The Berejiklian government is rattled, it's defiant, and it's totally out of touch. Guy Zangari is the state Labor member for Fairfield. He's passionate, energetic, loves his community. He was previously a secondary school teacher in Western Sydney for 17 years prior to being elected to the parliament in 2011. He is livid, as many are. My phone wouldn't stop today. He joins me. Guy, thank you for your time. I mean, the residents of Fairfield are being hammered left, right and centre by a totally ridiculous government edict which calls upon them to get tested once every three days. You represent these people. What are they saying to you? They were shocked, Alan. They were completely shocked. Uh, at 11 uh, o'clock yesterday, I found out as the local MP, so did my other two colleagues as well, and the community, that uh, they were going to be subjected to these tests every three days and no consultation whatsoever, Alan. So no consultation with the people on the ground and the people that I represent. So the government um, has just put this in place. And can I just say, Alan, that they've put these testing uh, facilities in place where you actually can't get into them because for some of them there's one road in and one road out um, in amongst suburbia uh, where people have been struggling. And as you so rightly said, traffic has been horrendous. I mean, imagine, imagine being on the Cumberland Highway and waiting for hours with a big oh semi-trailer coming past you. It's beyond it's, belief. It's insane. I can't imagine. And, I can't imagine. I mean, you wrote to the Health Minister, you and your two colleagues, uh, uh, Lalich and, and McDermott, yesterday and, and warned it would be a disaster and you called for more resources to be in place. Have they responded? 
Well, they responded late this evening, Alan, 24 hours later. I mean, it's just absurd. What we're having is a public health order put in place but policy on the run, Alan, how can we possibly uh, deal with a pandemic when you've got a government that has policy on the run? People I expect know. a lot more. But it, people is, it true, is it true that some of these people waited for hours, queued up for the Fairfield showground, only to be turned away because the facility had been closed? Yes, that that is correct. I myself yesterday lined up and I thought I would get out of the line just to see what was going on. Shock horror. Uh, it was advertised for 10pm closure at 7.30, Alan. It was closed. So you had kilometres both ways ways uh, of, of traffic having to be re-diverted to three other testing sites and it was absolute it was bedlam. Look at, it. Alan, Look at the pictures. Alan, Look at the pictures. Look at the pictures. You're Sorry. dealing with people hard. You are dealing with hard-working people who want Definitely. to pay their bills, Absolutely. put food on the table and Look they have this. to be subjected after an eight-hour day well, to wait on. in the car for another six hours. Yeah, but Guy, hang on. What about the police presence in South West Sydney? Dog squads, mounted police. How do your residents feel about this? Oh, well, look, you know, when we had a spate of shoot shootings, it was definitely not proportionate. When we called for more resources of police, the government didn't listen. This is a health crisis. This is not a this is not a crime issue. Um, I mean, look, I want to say one thing about our police. They, they do the best they can. They're directed well, by the government. But and they've people, got to do what they've, they've got, got to do what they're, they're told to do. But at, yeah. the end, but at the end of the day, we have a lot, a lot of residents that have come from war-torn countries and simply mm. seeing, um, you know, extra police on the ground, sometimes can people yeah. can suffer from PTSD. All right. Now, we are... Right. So yes. They think they've left that kind of environment behind. Look, just before you go, Guy, an interesting thought. If you go to Cuba today, thousands have taken to the streets in a wave of demonstrations demanding an end to a 62-year-old dictatorship. And we're told the Cuban unrest frames a key question whether authoritarian regimes will prevail in the long term or we sow, are we sowing the seeds of their demise? Now, I've been around and I'm telling you that is exactly what government is doing here unless it changes direction. Guy, thank you for your time. We'll keep in thank touch. You, Tell all those people out there they've got a lot of support. The public don't thank cop you. this either. There he is, the local member.